Hi everyone, today I'm going to briefly break down how to set up and pay your employees on QuickBooks Online, mainly for Canadians, but this might apply if you're in the US as well. It's the same process minus the payroll number. My agenda for this video, it's gonna be how to know when you need to register for a payroll number, how to get a payroll number, how to set up employees on QuickBooks, how to run payroll, and lastly, how to remit taxes. Because as an employer, you have to remit their taxes because there's an employee and employer portion. So if we just start off, and when do you need to know if you need a payroll number from the CRA? Well, it's before you hire and pay an employee. So prepare this in advance, even if you don't have any employees yet. So you need it before you pay someone because it's a certain number. If you have a business number, if you're incorporated and you're running your own books, you get a nine digit number followed by RC0001, that's your business number. If you registered for HST, which you should, it will be the same nine digits and then RT0001. And then if you set up for payroll, same nine digits, RP0001, and you can have 0203 for any number of reasons. I don't really know why you'd get a two or a three, but let's jump right in. If you're like, hey, okay, I have a business number. How do I set up for payroll? So what you want to do is go to Canada.ca, gross, and then you'll go down to taxes. Now you're wondering, this is a lot of stuff. I might have clicked on my account or my business account before. Let's go to payroll. We're going to go to manage or open a payroll account. And then here it tells you a few sections. What is a payroll account? Determine if you need to register before you register and then how to register. I would obviously register using your business registration number, BRO. I don't have a new number that needs it yet, but when you sign up, this social insurance number is yours. They're identifying the person that is registering. So if I just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, does this work? It doesn't work. One, 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 one. Does this work? It doesn't. Okay. So this is, <laughs> regardless, these are these are the certain things that you need to just register for the payroll number to begin with. And then what you'll need to do, we'll go into QuickBooks. I'm assuming you have it set up and I'm assuming you've paid for the QuickBooks feature. So if we're just determining which one do we use, how do we know if we have the feature? So I'll go into one account that doesn't have it. We just click over here, scroll down on the left and you see payroll. Let's look at overview. Welcome to QuickBooks Payroll. Let's get acquainted. I don't have anything set up here. Get started. And then it's like, hey, have you paid employees before? No. If you have, you need to let them know because you need to put their the, the gross expenses like CPP, EI, and tax that they've paid so far. So if you're a new company, no. If you have, you need to input that information if you're merging your books over. And then what is your first pay period with QuickBooks? We could do this one. And then was a primary work location? We could do all these items. But what I want to do is go to a company that already has it set up. You know, it's weird. I actually didn't pay for it on this account. So I don't know why it's here. It should ask me to sign up for it, but I didn't. All right. Switching to a company that already has employees. I'm going to show you how to add someone. Now there's two things you could do. You can add all their information yourself or you can have them using the QuickBooks workforce add their own information. I'm going to show you just how to add it yourself just so we can run a brief payroll number. So we'll scroll down here, we'll go to employees. I'm gonna blur out some people's information and then I'm going to add an employee, first name, Let's go Bob, last name, Bob, email. This is required. Let's go, cool. They'll get an email from Workforce about their pay stubs, every pay stub, and then their annual T4s as well. Hire date, let's just go back to Gen 1, I guess. Okay, here's what, Here's where you have to toggle. Did they already give you the TD form that you can fill out or are they gonna get the email and fill it out themselves? If you have to wait for them to fill it out, you won't be able to run payroll until that's all done. So I'm just gonna 
uncheck this because we'll do it for the purposes of this video. I'm trying to make sure I'm centered or I'm in frame. I keep slouching. All right, their profile. When you have these warnings, you can't run payroll and they're not active until these are filled out. So let's just play around with it here. What do we need? Street address. So we'll go one, two, three, fake street, Toronto. What's a postal code? Does that work? Birthday. Let's just choose 2000. So it looks real. Social insurance number, let's try this. This should work. Did it work? It's invalid social insurance number. Let me play around with numbers until I find one. That's funny, I got it. Okay, so we got the personal information down. The employment details, not necessary. Tax withholding, this is the TD form that they should have filled out if they have any deductions, if they're exempt from certain items, but this doesn't really apply to majority of people. So we'll close this. Payment method. Let's go instead of, um, they could do direct deposit, which they'll need to enter in certain information like the transit institution number. So I'm not gonna do that here. So we're gonna go by check, go save. Pay types. Now this is, um, how much they make, is it salary, is it hourly? And then I think, let's just play around. Why don't we do commission? So we don't have to set up a certain amount. If it's salary, we can do 50,000 a year. And then you could even have to set up any overtime or vacation pay, but we're not gonna do that here. This is obviously depending on the type of business that you have and your arrangement with your own employees. Let's click save. All right, so now that we have someone set up, see that was pretty easy. If this top part, if they didn't get, uh, if they didn't set it up for you or send you the information, they have to do it through workforce. So you can't run payroll until they have this. So what I'm going to do is go to, oh, you can delete an employee here. It's hard to delete an employee if you've paid them. And I'll kind of show you because we'll be setting up a fake payroll here. And then I'll show you just if you're trying it out, we have to delete the payment first and then we can go back and delete the employee. So what I'm going to do go back to employee list, or you can go here and just go overview. Employees, let's go run payroll. And now this will only work for your established and set up employees. You have three employees that aren't set up. I'm gonna blank out their names though. And it's calculating the monthly or bi-weekly pay that we've set up in our draft or in our example. We can preview. This is just what it'll look like. So it's showing us the gross amount that they're getting paid. This is coming out of our bank account. And then how much they're getting in terms of, oh no. So this is the employer portion. This is their pay minus certain, minus certain deductions. And then their net pay, this is what they'll get on hand. So remember how I mentioned the employer has to pay employee and employer portion. So we have to match CPP and we have to pay a little bit more when it comes to EI. So as long as you can verify and ensure these amounts are correct, you can preview the payroll details. It gives you a bigger breakdown. Um, I'm not sure if you want to get this detailed, if this is uh, of interest to you, but it might be good to know and to verify. So let's close that. Let's submit payroll. It'll also create an entry for you. Now here, because I noted it was by check instead of direct deposit, I have to print the pay stub and then give it and print the check and give it to the employee. But we're not gonna do that here. We're gonna close. Do we need help with taxes? I'm gonna go later. So now you paid your employees and then you have 30 days. You know what? It's the 15th of the next month to remit the payroll taxes that you need to remit to the CRA. So the employee gets paid the net amount and then the variance, you have to pay it. You have to send it by the 15th of the next month or there are pretty big penalties. And I'll show you how to run that here. There's two places you could find it under payroll and payroll tax, or you go taxes, payroll tax. They take you to the same place. So let's go payroll, payroll tax. And then what we need to know is our filings I think it's the TD7 form. So here's what we're gonna do. It's resources. Let's go to remittance forms monthly. P2 
PD7A. So I called it TD7, but it's the PD7A. So if we view, this gives us the information that we need to submit. And then you're wondering, hey, how do I pay? What's going on? So we go back to our CRA account and it is pretty, it is, it is kind of annoying. So here, I'll, I'll show you what happens. So let's click. If you're wondering, it might be payroll. It might be to the payments to the CRA. We need to make payments, right? So let's click here. Payments for businesses. Make a payment. And then it's asking you, what type of payment do you want to make? And we're doing payroll source deductions. Let's go continue. And then here's kind of where it gets annoying. There are certain third party providers. And I, I don't think it lets you pay via check, uh, pay via credit card or interact on the website. So if you go make a payment, it tells you that you need to go to certain places. Only if the company has a logo, pay now. And it just, uh, it keeps going. Regular remittance, quarterly remittance, regular. These are the information that we've had previously. If you want something a, a little easier to manage or easy, a little easier to look at. So you, you'll fill out this information. Remember when I said you needed an RP number? This is your payroll account. So you can't submit a payment unless you have this. So here, take a look. Gross payroll, number of employees, period, and amount. This is the PD7A. Gross payroll, number of employees, period, and and then amount. So this form gives you all the information you need. If you don't want to go through all this hassle or process and you're wondering, I want an easier way to pay, there's something called pay simply. So if you go paysimply.ca, they do charge you, I think 0.5% for every payment, but you can click on CRA, business tax, payroll source deductions, and then current year. And then you'll fill out the information again, end of period, business name, gross payroll, number of employees, payment amount, and you can pay this way. And it's all legit. It is pretty much the same thing. This is, it's just not as intuitive to get to this. Do you see how many buttons I had to click? And then we'll go back here. So now if I want to delete this, I, I forgot how to delete because it was hard to delete an employee because I just created a fake one, right? So if we go back to payroll employees, We'll click on this guy, actions, delete. You cannot delete because you've paid them. So if we want to change status, let's go to terminated. Last day of work was today. Reason for status change. And then, you know what's interesting? Um, we have to send this. It, it asks you if it wants to send this to the CRA so the people could get their EI if you fired them. Make sure you send a record of employment to Service Canada within five days. I'm going to do it later because this is fake. So now there is one thing. We have to go in, make paycheck list. I'm wondering if I can delete this one item. Actions, print, actions, delete. It would be nice to void this. Make an adjustment. Oh, void or delete. Look at this. When I delete this, let's say we made a mistake and then we can start all over. Deleted that, and now I can delete this employee. Are you sure you wanna permanently delete? Yes. Remember, you can't, you, it won't let you do it if you had if you had a payment, so you have to go in and delete the payments, but then make sure those weren't real. If you already paid it and you sent the remittance to the CRA, you can't, uh, you can't delete, it'll, it'll mess up your books. Okay, so that's all I want to do for this video. Pretty basic. Um, I, I started with QuickBooks recently just for a few clients that I had. N not really clients. We you know, started an AI company. I hope they're not watching this because they're not supposed to talk about it. But let me know if you want more QuickBooks videos. They are pretty basic. It's more in terms of bookkeeping. But I did make this video for a few questions that I had from business owners, new business owners who are just getting into hiring and paying employees. I'm going to leave it here. Thanks for watching and tune into the next one.